Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news recap for the last week. We'll be talking about a couple of items, including AMD partner cards, AMD BIOS revisions, and the driver revisions. And then we'll also be going through some of the Intel security features and updates. And then we've got uh, news on this EVGA motherboard, the X299 Dark, which I think we saw at Computex, is finally coming out. So it's been a while, but we've got some notes on this one. We'll be testing it shortly. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So starting out with more of an ad-libbed thing just about testing I've done the last few days, We've been working on the Asus Strix and the PowerColor RX Vega 64 cards, finally, and we're getting places. A couple notes here. Driver version 17.11.3 is bugged. AMD knows about the issue, and I think by the time this video goes live, they will have released 17.11.4, uh, which fixes most of the issues that we've encountered. So on 17.11.3, the clocks don't seem like they... Uh, two things. They don't seem like they work properly. They don't seem like they report properly. So testing on 17.11.3, both partner cards we're working on perform the same as the reference cards and also don't report the clocks correctly at all. So that's one problem. Uh, rolling back to 17.10.1 fixed some of the performance issues, but then it's an older driver version. So you get into territory where it's like, it's not really a representative test anymore because when people buy the card, they're not going to use a week's old version. So uh, yeah, 17.11.4 should fix it. We will be testing as soon as we have that. It should be sometime today as of filming. Uh, and that should pretty much fix all the problems. So the reviews are coming. We're just, we've been waiting. We were waiting on VBIOS from the partners. Then we were waiting on clearance from them to review. And then we were waiting on drivers to work with the partner cards. So it's been a long story, but Hopefully we'll have actual reviews for you soon. Uh, I know that some outlets have posted some already. 17.11.4 I think was shared uh, a little ahead of time with some people, but we're, we're waiting for the final official release version uh, to consumers because too much has changed lately. Uh, it makes no sense to publish a review with data that could potentially at this point be invalid when we've already waited like two months to post one. So that's what we're doing, we're waiting. Uh, we have the Red Devil and we have the Asus Strix, both of which have teardowns on the channel already. Uh, thermals have already been done for a while now on both cards. Uh, that all worked just fine. The problem is when you start getting into gaming, you either sacrifice the clocks or you sacrifice the performance optimizations done for the, the games. With 17.10.1, you lose some of those. 17.11.3, uh, you lose the clock reporting. But thermal testing is just fine, so that's good. Real topic here, a Gigabyte has an RX Vega 64 Gaming OC Windforce 2X, I think is the name of the card. This is their Windforce dual fan cooler applied to Vega, including Vega 56, and thus far we've only worked with and seen Vega 64 partner cards, so Gigabyte's venture with Vega 56 stands as far more interesting, seeing as it's the better buy of the two RX Vega units. The Windforce card claims to be using a custom PCB with a 12 plus 1 phase VRM, but if you look at it, it looks like it's basically referenced just taller, and we can actually probably show some of our power color footage where it's the same thing there. Either way, though, the reference PCB and VRM are crazy overbuilt, so that's not a bad thing. Gigabyte has a copper plate at the back of the GPU, which we previously found did nothing for thermals when we stuck probes all over the Extreme 1080 Ti version with a bigger plate. That said, this time they've also got a copper heat pipe running through the back plate. So it's more likely to impact temperature now, but remember it's not going to change the core temperature that much. So if you're trying to measure core temperature differences, you're not really gonna find them. They will not be within, they'll be basically outside of test resolution for the most part. So what you're more likely to see, we think, sort of hypothesizing, is a difference in the VRM temperatures because if you look at the heat pipe, it follows the VRM component placement on the opposite side. So there's a chance that it might actually work this time and do something. Other than that, it's an aluminum and copper heatsink with two 100 millimeter fans. The clocks are targeted at 1560 megahertz boost, so not much of an OC, but there's potential that the board power allowance is higher than reference. We'll just have to see. 
The next one, XFX, also has their 56 and 64 double edition cards coming out. Photos of these have surfaced before, but XFX has now more formally shown its double edition cards. And it's, uh, well, it's something. It's, uh, it's something that resembles a fish. And it has carbon fiber finish on it. But truth be told, we're not sure what XFX is doing with the design. The company is using a short PCB, so it's, it's small enough that you could make a Vega Mini with it, but they've stuck a giant cooler on it, so you lose that option. But uh, yeah, at least the backplate logo will be right side up when you install the card, though. That's good. But we'll, we'll see. see if anything comes of that one. Uh, MSI. So MSI has followed Gigabyte here with a BIOS update for some of their all-in-one computers and motherboards. This doesn't apply to every motherboard just yet, but keep checking. Basically, this is for the Intel TXE uh, security issue, where there was a concern of security exploits and vulnerabilities on Intel platforms dating back to, I believe, Skylake that we know of. And this is from the Minix OS. So Minix is an OS that was built by an educator, Andrew Tannenbaum, and that was used by Intel legally under the license it was released under to uh, create a, basically a low-level OS on a negative ring on the CPU that you have no access to to catch everyone up. Uh, so now Intel has released a tool, which we'll link below, that allows you to tell if you are affected and if you need to be concerned about this. And if you are, then the next step is go to the motherboard manufacturers, download a BIOS update, and install it. MSI is starting to release theirs. Gigabyte has one out. And I believe ASRock might also have one out already at this point. Next news item, EK Water Blocks. So EK recently received an award from us for the best noise levels or best silence with their EK Predator XLC that we tested late last year, early this year. And that cooler, unfortunately, as great as it was in other ways, was discontinued for catastrophic failures 70% of the user reviews on Newegg are one star, basically. Hopefully the new version's better. The Phoenix takes the same or similar QDC valves, which we actually like those valves a lot, the quick disconnect, and uh, takes the same semi-custom loop layout where you disconnect the valves, you can connect a video card block or a CP radiator. It's a semi-modular design. Cost isn't great. Uh, they did reduce the cost immediately, though, after launch, but prices for the units are 190 euros for the 280 rad core, 60 to 70 for the CPU blocks, 125 to 135 for the GPU blocks. It's getting towards a real open loop, but the idea, I guess, is that it's easier to implement for someone who doesn't want to do that but still has the, uh, the funds to get one. So that's the Phoenix. It will uh, be... They've also got 360s, I think, and it looks like they come with the Vardar fans if you buy that combo pack. Next news item, EVGA's X299 Dark Board is finally in. That's what this one right here. So this we just got in today, and it's a board that we saw at Computex. So the reason it's interesting, and we're doing thermal tests on this. We already did them on the ASUS board. It's interesting because not only does it have a real heat sink that's finned, like a heatsink should be, all the way across. Pretty good fin density, too. Uh, they also went and put little crowns or dunce caps or whatever on top with these tiny fans. Like, like 30 millimeter, 40 millimeter fans, something like that, maybe smaller. I'd have to, I'll have to measure it for the review. But two tiny fans on there, they blow straight down. Obviously, it's gonna cool excellently. We'll have to test and see how the noise is, if they're whiny. And uh, a couple other things too, like if they're even necessary, because a, a heat sink that's finned properly like this should do a lot of the job for you already. It also has a, a sort of, I mean, this is just a retention plate for the VRM heat sink, but it's finned as well. It will dissipate a bit of heat, though with a, a thermal pad that thick, not a whole lot will get there. And otherwise, uh, heat pipes in there. There's another heat sink under the IO shield. There's built-in I.O. cover. It's got exposed gold on the edges, which will help expose the ground layer. Uh, and it's built for overclocking. So for people who are asking, why does it only have four dims? It's because it makes things a lot easier for overclocking and it shortens the trace length from the dim slot to the CPU. So if you're doing memory overclocking, you should theoretically 
all other things equal, be able to achieve a higher memory clock on something that has uh, dim slots closer to the CPU than one that does not. So that's the theory behind it. Other than that, it's also got a fan of the chipset, which I think might blow air into the SSD uh, M.2 cooler. That's what we were told at Computex. I have to take it apart and see if they ended up doing that or not. But that's the that's the board. It actually looks pretty interesting. I'm excited to look at it. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that X299 has had slow adoption because this board is actually pretty cool. But, you know, X399 is giving it a hell of a hard time to compete. So that's pretty serious competition from AMD. Uh, Silverstone has a PM02. This is a quick news item. We'll just put some pictures up. We like the Primera 01. The Primera 02 looks like it gets rid of the best feature of it, which is the heavily ventilated pure metal mesh front uh, that breathes excellently. They've replaced it with a semi-mesh, semi-artistic design for the front. Not going to breathe nearly as well, but better than cases with a flat metal front. Silverstone, kind of talking with them, it almost sounds like... Uh, they're a little discouraged, I guess, by the market not adopting the cases with actually good airflow, which I can I can hear that. But so they're trying something out by deviating a bit from their more function focused approach and going for some form to try and capture market share. But let them know in the comments below if you actually like that move or not. Uh, finally, there's a couple sales. We're going to be including sales at the ends of, of these videos through the holidays, at least. And we'll include links below to the products that we're talking about each time. So AMD Ryzen CPUs, once again, are marked down more than they were previously uh, in the US on Amazon. At time of filming, we saw them for $171 for an R5-1600, which won our best value award for good reason at $190. Now it's $20 cheaper. So we can strongly recommend that if you need a CPU. The R7-1700 is down to $240-ish, which is also pretty crazy good. Uh, 10 bucks gets you a 1700X, not worth it. Just get the 1700 and overclock it. And then the 1080Ti Duke, which we put on our best value for a 1080Ti, uh, as far as 1080Ti's go, is down to 710 with a rebate right now. And the Fractal Meshify, which we gave the best overall award for a case, is currently $70. So we, we picked some of the items here that actually received different awards and accolades from us. And we'll link them below because they're on sale and they're good deals. That's all for this one. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. Store.GamersNexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. This is the GN Graph logo, which is, I think, on sale. At least most of the other shirts are. And so are the stickers. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.